I'm Lois. I'm a compulsive overeater. I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. I write it down. I call it into my sponsor. I don't eat in between meals no matter what. And abstinence is the most constant, consistent. And for today, it's the most important thing that I do in my life. And um, uh, I'm really happy to be sharing tonight. Um, I... Um, God willing, uh, March, it'll be uh, four years back for me. My second, it's my second long-term abstinence. Uh, I always feel like I need to qualify that and explain it. I, um, I became abstinent in 98 and I was abstinent all the way until about 2006 or so. And I had uh, tremendous physical success. I, I was very involved in the community and um, I left um, I, I, I did not slip. It was not an accident. Uh, I just had a little temper tantrum and I, and I, and I went, I left because I was angry at, at people. And, um, you know, I think it's important to share that, that, um, my, my walking away from this program was a deliberate rebellious act. And that's, that's a great example of my personality in general, um, rebellious and, uh, confrontative um, was my personality. Let me, let me qualify that. The second abstinence, which as I said, started, uh, March 25th, 2016. Um, it was, it was kind of funny how I came back to gray sheet, even though I hadn't been in gray sheet for about nine years, I still stayed in contact with people. And, um, I went out to eat with a bunch of people and I actually went to a meeting cause I just missed everybody so much. And I, uh, I had moved down to Florida to take care of my parents. And I went out to eat with some friends on Long Island and we went to the meeting. And um, one of my closest friends, who I used to sponsor, by the way, came up to me and he says, Jesus Lois, you got so fat. And I couldn't believe he said that to me. But you know what? I was, and I'm going to show you a picture. I don't know if you can see it on here. Can you see it at all? Let me go that way. No, no, I guess it's better that way. But I was um, 200 and um, stop the cat. I have a cat and a dog, by the way. I was uh, 230 pounds and I'm five feet tall. And um, what happened, I'm going to show you this other one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it that well. But this is the before and the after. Um, it's Again, it's a little hard to see because of the lightning. But um, what happened is... Um, I went out to eat with them at the diner nearby and there was a diner that we went to on Long Island that was a very gray sheet friendly. They knew us. They, before we, we would come in every night and they would have all the salads ready or all the stuff ready that we eat. And um, I weighed and measured at the diner that night with them because I would be the only one not weighing and measuring. And it was the most wonderful way to come back into this program. Um, if, if anybody out there is struggling and has not, uh, gone out to eat with a fellow gray sheeter who is confident to take you out to weigh and measure in a, res a restaurant. I strongly recommend it because it will just help you so much. Um, I'd like to um, share that um, this, this abstinence for me is the same but different, if that makes any sense. Um, I, I read something in the Little Red Book this morning and it said, we strive for a way of life um, in abstinence or sobriety that is necessary to bring us, it says, contented sobriety, health, and sane behavior. And um, that's, that's my goals. For, th those are my goals right now. Um, in, in terms of what I used to be like before I was on Gray Sheet, um, I, I spend most of my time, I spent most of my time worrying what everybody thought of me. It was always, you know, do you like me? Do you not like me? Why don't you like me? And, and there could be, you know, a hundred people in a room and 99 would like me and one person wouldn't. And I would just focus on the one person that didn't like me. And I would just tear my hair out and do everything just to get that one person. And, um, it's, it, it's an incredible uncomfortable, unhappy way to go about life. Um, I, I had a family that was um, t totally adequate in terms of everything I needed physically, my, my shelter, my food, my clothing, camp. Uh, we had a boat, we had a house on the water. All, the, all of those things were given to me. 
but they had a um, an attitude towards life that I have that that has velcroed itself into my psyche. Um, you know, it, it, nothing was ever good enough. Nothing was ever okay. Acceptance was mediocrity, according to my parents. Um, you know, what whatever you did, it could always be better. Um, you know, the old story, uh, all B, all A's and one B plus on the report card. And of course, why the B plus, um, the, one of the biggest stories and I, I'm sorry, that's my, I'm supposed to have a call coming in. Um, what happened is, uh, one day I went to call a friend of mine on the phone when I was in high school and my father, um, said, what are you doing? I said, I'm calling Jan. He goes, why are you calling her? I said, why? Well, I want to get together with her. He, my father says, well, if she liked you that much, she would have called you. And that's how I grew up. That's how I grew up. Um, it's a, a very, it casts a shadow over all of your actions. And, and that feeling, you know, I fight against that feeling even today. Uh, when I got older, you know, um, uh, I became very obsessed with uh, other people's bodies. My mom was always battling her weight. She was never fat, but she was always battling her weight. And so when, you know, she had this, she was very regimented. Monday, Wednesday, Friday for breakfast, my sister and I had to carbohydrate with a dairy product. Tuesday, Thursday was um, scrambled protein and whatever else and fruit. And uh, I remember I used to hate the scrambled protein days. I only wanted the carbohydrate in, in protein days. That's all I wanted. Um, when I got you know older and I rode my bike to school, I would you know, tell my mother I was going to the library and instead I would go to the local um, uh, stationery store and buy all sweets and salty snacks. Um, when, I, when I got into uh, college, I had a head-on car crash, not my fault, a drunk driver. And... Um, uh, I bit through my lip. I had a hole in my, my mouth and I bit right through. I had to, you know, they had to sew me up and everything. And I, I could only eat frozen products for about two, three months. And I went back to the doctor and I had, I, I get, I didn't even realize that because I was living in pajamas. I I'd gained a ton of weight and my doctor put me on diet pills and, um, I took them and they were the most magnificent things I had ever had in my life. I, I was, obviously I was high uh, and I used diet pills on and off for the next uh, 10 to 15 years till I got pregnant and uh, got very heavy with my daughter, uh, over 200 pounds. And again, I'm only five feet tall and um, struggled, struggled, struggled to get that weight off, struggled forever to get that weight off. Um, I knew about Overeaters Anonymous. I, I knew that at the time that I went to Overeaters Anonymous from an earlier age, the only food plan was the gray sheet food plan. And they, they were strict. It was without exception. You weighed and measured in restaurants and everything else. So it was a, a strict gray sheet. Um, and um, uh, I went there and I did it for uh, 30 days and I lost the weight and I left. And um, I always remembered it because it was the only food plan that really worked for me. Um, after I, as I, after I got married and had my daughter and gained all this weight back, um, I'd start to see a therapist because I was struggling with postpartum depression and other things else. And, um, the, and I was also very heavy and, and the, the therapist said, you know, you can't do anything about your daughter's constant screaming. You can't do anything about your husband getting high. You can't do anything about your parents being the way they are. What can you do? And I blurted out, I could do something about my weight. And, and I started sobbing and he goes, why are you crying? I said, cause you don't understand. I'm going to have to go on this food plan. That's horrible. And it's awful. And I know what it is. And I was, I, I knew exactly what I was going to have to do. And I went back to, um, the OA meeting in New York and, um, I, I couldn't find any functioning uh, opening meeting. So I had to go to the main office in East Meadow. And I, and I walked up the stairs to the office and at the desk was the, fattest woman I had ever seen in my life. And I thought, oh my God, this doesn't work anymore. And I was horrified. And I, and I, I didn't even, I wanted to run away. And she said to me, oh no, no, we, we, we got rid of that gray sheet. We voted that out. And, and now you can do whatever food plan you want. It's wonderful, isn't it? And I, and God help me. I thought looking at her, I said, no, it's not, this is not what I want. And I, I was really upset, but I went to a meeting and I did find some people that worked um, a, a WW food plan. And I went on that and I lost most of my weight and I did pretty well. And I did well for a couple of years. Um, I drifted away 
And um, a few years later, I ran into a friend of mine, one of the most angriest women I had ever met in my life, mean and everything else, but I ran into her at an OA meeting. Thank you. And um, she got up to qualify and she said, hi, my name is so-and-so and I weigh and measure three meals a day after the gray sheet. And I, I, I couldn't believe it. Here was this woman who was much heavier than me and she was thin, calm, serene. And I, I, gra- I almost attacked her at the end of the meeting. I said, How, what did you, she goes, Lois, I went back to the basic gray sheet. She goes, we, we, we have another group of meetings. We meet secretly, you know? <laughs> um, and um, and uh, a, a few months later, I, I, I went to a gray sheet meeting and I, I tried to go to a gray sheet meeting where um, I went as far away from my Long Island house as I could. I, th- I went practically into Queens because I didn't want anyone there to know me because they had known me from before. And of course I walk in and it's like, Lois, how are you? And I'm, I'm like, Oh God. You know? And um, after about a month I, I did it. And, and as I said, that was about 98 and I, and I was on Gracie till about 2006, 2007. I don't remember the exact date. Um, this, this time around, and I, and I feel um, like uh, when I heard people's qualification dates, I felt a tinge of shame because I, that, I could have been me saying 98 and on, but that's, that's pride. And I know that's pride and, you know, got to get over that this time around though. Um, I'm doing gray sheet in central Florida. There are no meetings near me. I have to do everything zoom or phone. I, I go out of my way to go to um, retreats and other things like that. Um, I have fallen in love with the zoom. Um, meeting method now. Um, uh, I also have to say this, this time around, I'm working this program differently. Um, yes, of course I wanted to lose weight and I, and I did, I, I lost about 80 pounds. Um, I have some, uh, flab and weight that comes being in your sixties that, um, uh, that I'm going to have to, you know, make some changes in my food plan if I want to lose that. But what I, what I, what I realized is, and, and I'll quote this person, um, I, I accidentally joined what I thought was an AWOL a couple of months ago. And it turned out um, it was another kind of group. And it, and it said that I realized I need more than just gray sheet. I need to enlarge my spiritual connection. And I had read that 8,000 times in all the reading. And I don't know how much time I have left, but I just need to share that working steps 10, 11, 12 on a daily basis has changed my recovery tremendously. Um, I, I want to just say that knowing that if I'm behaving in a certain way, getting hysterical over traffic is a big, 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 big flag. Um, I, I now play tennis and I only could play tennis because I lost 80 pounds. I never could play it. The way I react on the tennis courts is the perfect metaphor for my spiritual condition, driving and tennis, believe it or not. And, um, if it wasn't for all of you going before me, telling me how you stayed abstinent through the death in a family, through um, you know gaining weight at 60, through um, dealing with parents, dealing with the death of my, both of my lost, both of my parents in abstinence. And that was, it wasn't that, it was horrible, but if I hadn't been abstinent, I don't know how else I could have gotten through it. But um, I, I, I just, uh, need to share that um, I've really changed my focus in this program, working on 10, 11, 12, making sure I do my meditation in the morning, making sure I write down my stuff. And um, I really, um, I, it's the biggest difference for me right now. And staying in touch with strong gray sheet people, very important too for me. Having backup in my car, making sure when I go to a restaurant, I call ahead. Um, I don't, I don't have any non gray sheet food in my house. Currently I'm living alone. So that, that makes it easier. Um, getting my exercise in for the health part. All of these things are only possible if we first put the food down. And, um, you know, putting the food down, you just have to suck it up. I mean, you just have, to, I mean, you know, those hours in between meals are, or I remember coming back, this is the worst, this absolute worst. Um, what do you do with your time in between meals is just amazing. Like, like that was a revelation to me. 
And I learned, I learned what people do. You chop and shop, you uh, read, you call people, you walk. And with that, um, I'll just say I'm blessed. Thank you. I see you. Um, I'm very blessed to be here. I uh, hope I didn't ramble too much. Uh, and um, I look forward to hearing what everybody has to say. Thank you. I pass.